Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome into tonight's broadcast. My name is Fling Panda, and I will be your host for tonight. We have our finals for the Find Me Alpha Championship Series March Madness Tournament <clears throat> coming at you live between seven live leave sins and not our president. Tonight, both teams have coming into this series having only lost one game all tourney long, so with this being the last match, somebody has to walk away with the prize of being the champion. 7LS has breathed through their division to win to finish with a series record of 6-0, which earned them the number one seed for the division. In the semifinal round, they played Magnum Heimerdongers and emerged victorious in a three-game series, winning by a scoreline of 2-1. to one. Captained by Jirachi, 7LS is particularly strong in the bot lane, with Jirachi and Violet Sociocat forming quite the duo. Rounding out the roster is Bad Instincts in the top lane, New Kappa Turk in the jungle, and Old Instincts Goku in the mid lane. Over for not our president, the people's champion, Hillary Clinton, looks to win this general election. I mean, wait, she looks to avenge her early exit from Season 3 playoffs. With a particularly strong play in the mid lane from Gerg7, not our president was victorious in their match over Iron Chef Symphonia in the semifinal round. Rounding out the rest of the team is... Kingston, HyperX in the top lane, and Fudgy Ditters and Bear Senor in the bot lane. This bot lane matchup between Fudgy Ditters and Bear Senor and Jirachi and Violet Sociocat will certainly be something to watch. All right, joining the cast tonight with me is my man, Opie. What's up, Opie? Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Let's do this. Yes, I'm excited. This should be a good one. We're gonna... Yeah, it's gonna definitely gonna be a, uh, an interesting game. Uh, I think a big chump comes down to champ select because these teams have been red hot. Yes, certainly so. a hallmark for both teams is their very strong champion selects. Of uh, for one team in particular, uh, seven lively sins really have some strong macro play coming from Violet Sociocat. Um, just talk us through what uh, what kind of an impact is that for her team? Yeah, I mean, just overall, like, I think both teams have had great macro pay in the long sense, but um, Violet Sociocat, one of those, you know, people just known for knowing where to go, when to be there at all times, regardless of it, whether they're ahead or behind, she has been that, you know, rock solid player throughout all the splits, essentially. So um, super strong there as as far as you know the shot calling go and knowing that that macro play to the game yeah so not our president kind of breezed through their last series um winning 2-0 over iron chefs um do you happen to catch those games yes i mean i wouldn't necessarily say they breezed through it um you know one game like the, that's the story for um not our president they they don't always have the greatest early game but they end up coming back later with that strong team play um and so i think that's going to be their strong suit is you know not necessarily going with the early game but going with that later game macro play make it sure that you get through the early game relatively unscathed which might be a problem here versus the seven lively sins just because once they get you know any sort of lead they know how to keep go keep rolling with it so if if not our president can kind of keep that keep that early game under control and then they come back with their strong later game i think they'll be all right yeah so yeah again the that, that early game is something you spoke about uh i think it was a game in which they it went like 30, 40 minutes, and at one point in time, Eric Guy Fieri on Nunu was... They're, they're trying to take a Baron or something, and they ended up getting him. And then that gave the Baron over to not our president. And then there wasn't enough wave clear for Iron Chefs to hold off the push from not our president. We've seen Baron pushes, especially late, be super strong. That's after that change that Riot made. Um, that really increased the power of the Baron later in the game. So I think that that'll be a huge 
uh, thing to watch in this game, the jungle control by Hillary Clinton versus New Kappa Turk, who was the MVP uh, for Seven Lively Sins in their series versus Magnum Heimerdongers. Yeah, I mean, New Kappa Turk, newer to the, the LCS scene, so, uh, but definitely showing prowess there in the jungle, knowing how to play. Um, and, I mean, fitting it really well. Um, has played quite a bit. I mean, I've I've played with him quite a bit, so um, definitely knows his stuff as far as the, as far as the game goes. So um, definitely going to be a good pickup, especially coming into this next split. So always want to kind of show off your show off as much as you can now, in you know this kind of tournament setting for um, upcom upcoming split. But yeah. Uh, yeah, showing off prowess in the jungle. Yeah, that's a very good point. Uh, we are opening our signups for the season four of the FIMU Alpha LCS. If you are a member of FIMU Alpha Symphonia and you wish to participate, there's a Facebook group that you can go find um, and you can sign up over there um, or message myself or Opie. Um, yeah, on our league clients. Uh, so yeah, yeah, New Kappa Turk is somebody that's come in and, and I've been super impressed by. This is the first time he's participated in any kind of organized Find you off a League of Legends uh, activity, and man, I gotta say, he's not normally a jungler, if I remember right. He's normally a support, but he is doing so much work in the jungle for his team at the moment. Yeah, I mean, and he's been doing really well, but you can't knock the rest of the team as well. Uh, they've all been uh, contributing super well to the you know their wins um and so i mean it's it's all going to come down to the whole the team play because i mean you look at nop that's been their win condition is just that team play they you know you've got greg in the mid lane who yes is a super strong mid laner um does win lane but the other lanes might not necessarily be as strong but with their team fight or team play late game that's what's been their win condition and then for you know seven lively sins just getting you know going hard in the early game getting to you know those you know 5v5 team fights getting to those roams early um and getting out of laning phase i think has been has always been their strong suit so we'll see which team can kind of play around their own strengths better yeah that's a good point right there um so what do you think uh, Seven Lively Sins are going to try and do to win this series? My idea is that if you're Seven Lively Sins, you look to keep Jirachi alive. Put Jirachi on a hyper carry, build a front line, and then rotate around and let Jirachi carry the team. Because Jirachi right now has proven to be one of the better ADCs in that's available in the Fimeo Alpha League Championship Series um, throughout its history. So kind of like... I won't, I'd almost say double lift, you know, it's kind of got that sort of factor to it where, you know, you put them on a hyper carry or some kind of heavy carry and play around their strengths and you're going to have a chance to win. Yeah. I mean, I think part of what they're going to look to do just because it's, it's Jirachi and you got Violet Sociocat in the bot lane. I think a lot of what their plan is to try and push the lanes, get a little bit of a lead. Um, and then, get those roams on once the bot lane starts moving get you know if they can get tower down early or they can get dragon pressure then they can roam mid and they can get tower after tower after tower and rotate throughout um so it, it kind of like it's like a hinge the the bot lane kind of rotates to the other lane um and i mean i think a lot of a big part of that is is alley with the shot calling there um we'll I, i'm interested to see what alley plays um just because i know you know thresh and blitzcrank who are those big playmakers um and do have that huge pick potential uh, are great picks for her and i mean she always does really well under pressure and those kind of champions can be game changers or you know once you you pick those you know it's going to be a hard game to fight against so i'm interested to see how uh the ban phase goes for nop uh, just because, I mean, it's kind of hard to ban out any one particular person, especially, you know, when you're in the finals because everybody kind of has 
multiple champs that they're proficient on, but I think the bot lane is for 7LS is going to be kind of what they rotate around. They're going to try and get them moving. Yeah, so over for NOP, though, they have a bot lane that's pretty strong, too, with Bear Senor and Fudgy Ditters. How would you expect those two to counter the power out of Jirachi and Violet Sociocat? Uh, I mean, once again, I think it comes down to the support. Bear Senor has had some monstrous games, um, you know, and like and playing Alistar, which I think it would, you know, the champ pool there, I think, is great. Um, sort of as a counter to Ali because you if you get that Alistar into a, you know a Thresh or a Blitzcrank go ahead pull the Alistar what are you going to do you're not going to kill that Alistar because the Alistar is super tanky super strong wants to get closer to you know your carry um, for that free engage there so um, I think that it's going to revolve around Bears and you're kind of making the plays fudgy great AD carry as well um, but I think if you give fudgy a lead and if Bear Senior is able to do that, that's when Fudgy can kind of take off from there. Um, so I think it's going to be a lot in the bot lane matchup, especially it's going to be up to Bear Senior to kind of help take over the lane. Yeah, and over for NOP, they have a new player in their top lane, Kingston HyperX. What has he impressed you from Kingston in his first set of competitive PMA LCS experience? I mean, just the fact that Kingston has, while, you know, not being a, you know, platinum or diamond player, I mean, I don't think we have a whole lot of top laners in that, you know, you know, diamond or, you know, upper plat category as well. Um, but just being able to, you know, hold his own there and even definitely, you know, win and take over some of these matchups that you ne wouldn't necessarily give over to him, but it has been able to do really well um, and still, whether you're he's ahead or behind, roll into that late game role as well and you know how to play that the macro game and know where to be, um, whether, you know, shot calling, I'm sure, helps take part in that, but um, always there when those team fights break out so um definitely filled the role very well overall all righty here i'm just getting a few things set up um <clears throat> there we go so yeah kingston new player been super impressive i think one of the most impressive games he had for me was when he played lugo uh, this is Lugo in the top lane um, and held his own for the most part. Um, and Lugo is or was a diamond level player. I think is currently in platinum. And Kingston had just gotten out of bronze in the silver five. So I thought that was just a super impressive performance. So we're going to move into our pick band phase here. Um, we already have NOP. They're over on the blue side today. They have banned Kindred and they have banned Zaya. And in return, seven lively sins have banned Zareth. Yeah, I mean... Kindred, I think, can be a very strong champion if you have, um, you know, either like a tank in the top lane or, you know, a tanky support as well. Um, otherwise, I think if you get to late game, he's just too squishy and is not able to provide enough at that point, but has a super strong early game, which, you know, like we said, 7LS always has a really strong early game, and that's what they try to just roll that over into late game and just stomp you before you can get back into it. So I think taking that out, good idea. Yeah, no, that uh, that Kindred pick was super powerful for New Kappa Turk. That's how they were able to turn that series around versus the Magnum Heimer Dongers. Magnum Heimer Dongers won the first game. We're looking pretty... Looked like they had a pretty good shot to take uh, 7 OS out in the second game until the Kindred was just massive towards like mm -hmm. right as the transition into mid game kindred just took off and it was game over from there and then 7ls was able to draft the kindred again in game number three and again the kindred built a very big early lead so nop just taking that away right now not even giving them a chance we're gonna see the yep. last two bands be a morgana and a malphite and the first pick yeah, is alistair I mean, morgana taken away from ally good strong pick um, especially if you're picking an Alistar because that stops a lot of engage there. Uh, and then Malphite, always a super strong champion. One of my favorites, very close to my heart. But uh, taken away from Kingston, um, 
And I mean, I think that's a strong pick. I Yes, I do. Bad Instincts does play that, but I don't think that's something that they typically go with in with 7LS. I don't know if I, like, I think they're looking for some sort of other pick as well, but Alistar coming in, like I said, Barristan, you were one of his best uh, champions, so I think that's a first, super strong first pick. But it is countered by the Tom Kench coming in from 7LS, so Unbench I'm interested the to Kench. see who. I'm kind of interested to see who that goes with because, it, I mean, it, Tom Kench is a very flex pick. Um, I'm expecting the Tom... So What's that? It's not something that I would necessarily expect from Viola Sociocat, but she could bring it out. See, I actually disagree with that. I really do feel like that Tom Kench is going to be the support. Um, we're seeing a jinx pulled out here by Jirachi picking the 80 carry uh, super Which, early. Yeah. Which... Once you get, once I see that jinx, I feel like that's more of a, a gonna be an alley pick just because you have that jinx hyper carry, and now Alistar goes in. Guess what? You just nom up the jinx, jinx, you know, kites yep. back a little bit, and free to fire away from there. And it's a, it's a pretty beefy pick as well, so you'll have a decent front line. Yeah, so I, I have a feeling that Tom Kench is the support pick as we rate our picks for NOP. So what do you think NOP is gonna? look to take uh in response it's varus that's interesting i was almost feeling like they would go with something like tristana um but varus the pick for fudgy ditters i i don't mind the varus pick actually um i'm not a big varus player i i just don't like the play style but with how he is with the you know those on hit builds and um just the builds now that just shred so hard so if you get a chance to you know auto attack anybody whether it's a jinx or a tom kench it hurts so much so i think that will definitely help with a tom kench you'll be able to burn through them a little bit easier um so i don't mind it as long as you you've got that alistar frontline you don't have a tom kench getting to you you don't have a jinx um getting on top of you for those auto attacks i think it'll be good Plus, it has a decent early game in comparison to Jinx as well. We're going to see Orn pulled out here. This is either for Hillary Clinton or Kingston HyperX. Uh, I'm not really sure who. New Kappa Turk pulling out the cane. I like it. Ooh. Spicy. Yeah. So now you've got that hard engage from New Kappa Turk there. Uh, lots of damage. Kane's is always still a, still a super strong you know, assassin-y champion. Um, but definitely plays well into, you know, tankier people as well. But Orn is an interesting one for me. Um, I mean, I think it, it definitely helps build up that giant front line. Does have the CC available. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm assuming it'll be on to Kingston because I feel like Hillary Clinton has a little bit smaller of a champion pool in the jungle. We've only seen them really on a couple, you know, mostly, you know, Scion and the uh, the Scorpion. Skarner. Um, Skarner. So, I mean, we've only seen him on really a couple of champions, but has obviously maybe not done as well in the early game, but has had a strong late game as well. Yeah, we're going to see Ziggs banned away here from Gurg7, Zed taken away from Ult Instinct Goku, and then Warwick. Taken away from Hillary Clinton, so no Warwick for Hillary Clinton to pick in the jungle. Kind of pinching their pool down just a bit. As we await our final ban from NOP, I think there's kind of a bit of a conundrum here. You, do you want to throw a ban, another ban at Bad Instincts, or do you throw a ban at Old Instinct Goku? The Zed obviously is there, and it's a Vel'Koz, so they're throwing another one out at Nolan in the mid lane yeah i mean i would i would recommend that as well um and i think the reasoning would be more just because there's always certain champions you don't necessarily want to play against and Velkaz being one of those who's got very strong poke um doesn't i mean doesn't necessarily have a whole lot of cc but does have the poke which is not something you want to do before you start off a team fight so yeah um it's a bit interesting though because that means you left up bad instincts Zalawi, um which is pretty strong but we're gonna see maokai actually pulled out for bad instincts that is an interesting choice because i think Alawi actually would have been a good idea here you could split push with the Alawi 
Um, and then the Eli, could, if he gets ahead, could take on somebody. It's 1v1 or 2v1 even. Yeah, I mean, I think this is more of a... Protect Let's the try and have enough, yeah, safety net and team lock CC so that way Jinx can just auto attack somebody to death and that person is CC'd cannot get to Jinx and it's it's a protect the Jinx comp with a cane. So we'll see what Vilas or uh, what Ultin and Goku actually takes in the mid lane as well. But yeah, yeah protect the Jinx, let the cane go Ooh. in and assassinate somebody. We're gonna see Brand pulled out here by Gurg Seven, kind of light everything on fire and let the fireball bounce around. It's been I some time yeah, since I I've seen this. Part of the thing. Is they're hoping that you know that Brand can just get enough damage on, throw the ult out, maybe catch Jinx with a couple bounces, and take Jinx completely out of the fight. Yeah, with that increased power to Leandri's, the longer that thing's bouncing around, the more damage it is going to do. Um, so <laughs> I like that pick right now to get by, to just kind of bypass that front line and get some damage straight onto the Jinx. And we're going to see the Yorick in the jungle. That's an orn top lane. I was informed about some of these... <laughs> beforehand <laughs> so I'm, I'm excited for this yeah I'm, I'm very, obviously that's one of hillary clinton's signature champions if you will i'm excited to see how well he does with it yeah and if he's able to you know get off any sort of effective ganks or just kind of farms up and hopes the other lanes stay safe until he can get to that yorick and see, th this is where you, I think you really wanted something like a Lowey. I think that could go into a side lane and 1v1 the Yorick. Um, Maokai is not going to have as much success. I don't actually know how that, that matchup would play out, though. I feel because, like it would be... I mean, once you get to a certain point, Yorick can actually kind of sustain. And as long as you're not sitting there getting... Whapped. ...ulted on every single, you know, top, every single second, you know you could sustain better in the long haul push of it i think so i don't know but right. then that would mean yorick is just a split pusher and orin is going to be going with the team while yorick is going to be the jungler with smite and not teleport i mean you could so. you could conceivably go one three one as well um with nop going orin in one lane yorick in another alistair varus and brand in the mid lane um and yeah, that would actually I mean, be very effective against this tom kench Jinx, King, exactly, Maokai, and we're yeah, going to see cause... a Nazir pulled out, because there's just not a whole lot of split pushing, I think, in that 7LS comp. Um, so... Absolutely. Maokai, re really good into the early and mid game, but late game gets bowled over by most champions, so uh, just doesn't have the damage or anything to sustain. Does get very tanky, but n doesn't have the damage to be able to do like in a 1v1 versus like a Yorick or even an Orn. So... Uh, once again, that plays to NOP's strengths. Their strength is getting to that late game potential um, and, and winning those fights later on. Whereas, you know, 7 LS is all about that, that early game. So. We'll see. We'll see how these matchups end up playing out. Yeah. As we are going to move into our pick ban phase for the champions. All right. And so, I don't know if we picked it. We, if we saw Azir pick for Ult Sting. Yep. Azir I, pick for Ult Instant Goku in the mid lane yep. as well. The Azir right now, very popular pick in the pro scene. Um, so we'll have to see how well Ult Instinct's Goku does with it. I think we, uh, we saw somebody, who was it, Pole Belter in NALCS finals pick Azir three times in a row. And they curb stomped with Azir. So Azir seems to be the flavor of the month over for the pros. But yeah. as we all know, we are not pros. So. <laughs> well, Ult Instant Goku is, is known to play Azir, has had some really effective games with it. Um, and I think, I think a large part of that is just he has a good understanding of how the champ works. And I don't think a lot of people, 
because it's not seen like like it's you said not we are not pros you don't see it as much in lower elo as i'm sure you do in higher elo because it does have quite a bit of like play potential you know what i mean like it's got those those big old play impact potential if you have the mechanics and everything for it so we don't see it quite as much in the lower elo so maybe people just don't know how to play against it and then that he can use that to his advantage yeah we have brand pog fucking champ in the chat greg make me pr proud from k root 328 well hopefully he heard you it's been some time though since i've seen greg play brand i know he picked it up back in find me off uh, lcs season one um and brought it out as a spicy pick so it might have been a little while but we'll have to see how it goes but this matchup between brain and azir going to be one to follow um i'm super curious at how the yorick is going to do in the jungle versus this cane um hillary clinton was a little slow with their clears in the last series um which is why they started falling behind um but was able to bring it back um in the mid to late game so how the Yorick does with the clear versus a cane, I think is going to be a huge factor for this game. Yeah, I mean, if, you know, like you said, Kane early pretty good. So if, if Kane can get off some invades, I don't know if Yorick can stand up, you know, in the in that early fight, especially if Kane's able to get some damage because, you know, that assassin -y Kane does a lot of damage early. Yeah, so. but it, it, I think yeah, it's definitely a pick. I think for the for the mid to late and the split pushing, um, so it'll it'll be fascinating. New Capitur gonna have many ways to get into lanes too. Um, with the Caden, I don't know really know what it's called. The ability to walk through the walls, um, that I think is gonna factor pretty heavily, especially mm -hmm. in that top lane where we might see some early action between Bad Instincts and Kingston HyperX. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to say, you know, it's just going to be a tank fight, but in a sense it is, because Orin's got the shields, Maokai does have the sustain with his passive, um, but I'm, I'm interested to see how, how it ends up working out, because like, like we've said, Kingston has been pretty good. Um, we didn't touch much on bad instincts. Um, always a solid player. Has had some struggles um, in laning phase sometimes, so... Maokai always a pretty safe champ, so we'll see if he's able to keep keep that up, keep safe, and able to transition to that mid-game with 7LS to get to those team fights early. Um, all right, well, chat, let us know what your thoughts are. Um, we're going to continue discussing the team comps here. Um, but, yeah, let us know your thoughts in the chat, um, and we'll respond to those. So we have Maokai, Kane, Azir, Jinx, Tom Kench. Uh, win condition, protect the Jinx win game i'd say that pretty much sums it up all right nice simple there how about the orn yorick brand various alistair that seems to be like prolong the team fight let the brand pump out as much damage as we can and then maybe side push yeah i mean the brand's goal is to land you know hopefully land like a stun even onto a zero or jinx but just pump out that burn damage onto one of the carries because if you knock out azir or you knock out jinx fights over fights one for nop right there because yes azir late game is super strong and does pump out a bunch of damage but you know if you knock out the azir or jinx and it's a 4v5 at that point and you have a varus still alive for nop he's going to cut through some people he's going to cut through some tanky people so yeah, and with the the on hit build from Varus, cutting through some magic damage, which I feel like Bad Instinct is going to get a lot of. It's going to be hard to stay alive there if if Varus goes untouched in team fights. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see who has more area of effect uh, damage, because um, you got the Orin Ram obviously in the bellowing breath, um, Brand who's pretty much all area of effect, <coughs> AOE damage, and then the Varus. That has a bit as well. Whereas only for for seven LS, they only have the Kane and the Azir, and really the Jinx. Not really even Kane. It's more like the Azir and the Jinx for AOE damage. Not even Jinx really. It's more of a single target. So the Azir, 
I don't know. It'll be interesting. As we see some interesting summoner spell choices here, both Alistair and Tom Kench going Ignite, Azir has a cleanse versus a barrier brand in the mid lane. Thoughts on that real quick? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think the cleanse is an interesting choice. I think that the whole idea is trying to maybe get the burn off of an expecting ending brand. Uh oh. We went mad robot right there. Are we still mad roboting? I'm I'm so, I'm hearing interesting sounds. Yeah, I think we mad roboted for a little bit there. So why don't you I was repeat? About to say, I'm hearing it too. Everything you just said. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was saying it sounds uh, the cleanse just seems like it's very er, it's something more or less for the early to mid game because if. To be fair, if Alistar hits you and knocks you up or anything like that, good luck. Um, but I think that's more for he was thinking Brand might be taking Ignite. Uh, it would help cleanse the stun, Ignite, you know, the the burn damage, kind of maybe save you in those early game fights so you can pump out that little bit of extra damage or even escape from those fights. So I, I think that's more or less the idea behind the cleanse. Brand going with the barrier, though. Interesting choice. I mean, I don't see a, a problem with it, just because, you know, if you get a cane gank, if you can live for that extra half a second and you can land another ability onto the cane early or the Azir early, Brand's damage is enough that it could just easily trade those kills back, so... Yep. I think a lot's going to be roaming around the mid lane as far as new Capiturk goes. I think he's going to be sticking around the mid lane, trying to get uh, Ult Instinct go to a head a little bit. All right, we are loaded in. We are live. Hope you guys are ready. Um, so, yeah. Uh, usually go TP or Ignite. TP if I think I'm going to be behind. Ignite if I think I'm going to get some kills. Uh, we have all chat. Yeah, I don't think we need to go into that anymore. <clears throat> no invade. What are you talking about? It's the greatest BM. <laughs> Eric, if you're watching this, fuck you. Anyways, no invades. Jirachi just sitting by the blue buff. Nothing going on. Bad instincts in a bush. Like a good little tree. Looks like though both junglers are gonna start blue buff here. Pausing. I, I mean I think Yorick is a, is a champion that'll probably need to start blue buff just because, in order for yourself to be able to clear fast and, sustain anywhere, any likelihood in the jungle, you, you're spamming your skills. So, I think that's probably necessary. And Kane can start either way but likes to start blue buff just because you're using your skills early as well all right well we're listening to the same thing over and over again there from that yorick which is nice the pentakill kill riff. yorick yeah it wouldn't be pma lcs if we didn't have a pause um so and more music here <clears throat> Oh, Bad Instinct's going to drop a ward over the wall. That's interesting. Now they're going to show their faces. Are they going to bring that bush in? Nope, they're not going to bring it into the bush. So, new Kappa Turk. Going to know where everybody started. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, I think they also know that new Kappa Turk started that blue buff as well. Uh, just because... Maokai was not not there to leash if he was there warding at that point. Oh, but we might see people meeting together here. There's a ward for uh, NOP on their red buff, so they know it's happening. Yeah, both both sides, I think, know. Um, a lot of pings coming out here. Kane is still bot side. We're going to take direct camera over here. 
and watch as New Cap oh. Turk is looks like he nope he's not gonna get pinched by Gurk Seven who got zoned off a little bit looks like by Ult Instinct Goku and New Cap Turk thinking better of it or is he he's coming back for more. He's got it warded. I mean, he, he the buff reset and he's basically full health still. Yeah. So he's still got a ward on that as Director Camera actually wants to take his mid. Now we're gonna see the action here. Smite coming out. Ooh. But that goes to Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton now has double buffs. Gonna get the press the attack proc off too. But Violet Sociocat has rotated over and Violet Sociocat is gonna take the first blood. But flash over goes Bear Senor. He's gonna get the ignite and Bear Senor gets the kill on New Kappa Turk. We have all kinds of action early. Drache gonna use the chompers to zone. Gurk Seven gonna get the stun on Violet Sociocat. Violet Sociocat is so low here, popping no all the either. pots. No flash. Bear Senor Jirachi. though doesn't have a pass. Jirachi looks to be DC'd, and Jirachi is gonna get killed by Fudgy Ditters. Yep. Yeah, it looks like it looks like Jirachi DC'd and Violet Sociocat's probably gonna die here. Is getting run down. Used Flash initially to get in and get the kill onto Hillary Clinton. Maybe a little bit aggressive, but Hillary Clinton, if the C, you know, the skill CDs were up first, could have killed New Cap Turk there. So yeah, maybe it was a risk that needed to be taken. We're going to see Alistair come out with headbutt pulverize, it looks like. Um, so the Alistair will be able to pick up this kill on Violet Sociocat. Um, but yeah, is this a remake if you die after DC callout? I, I don't believe so. Don't no. know. We, we are not that sophisticated to whereas we can rewind or anything. Like I'm pretty sure in the actual LCS, they can rewind the games now. If I'm correct, All right, well, I could we're be listening wrong. to the same but thing over and over again there from that York. I don't think there's, so there's ever been York, really a yeah, situation where that has actually have pause. happened uh, yet. Oops. I may have just tipped my hand just a little bit too early there. It's okay. <laughs> Did their innocent DC or something? Oops, my leg switch is on. That is why Rich stood still. Actually, I think comp crashed. I bet they have Comcast. I know Rich was uh, complaining about having to use a an older PC tonight um, and not wanting to use Hansu's PC, um, borrowing Hansu's laptop. So that comp might have completely and totally died. So we might be in extended pause for some time. But for those of you on huh. stream... I have instant replay. Ooh, Ooh, buddy. I just forgot what buttons to press, and I accidentally pressed the wrong buttons. But, That's okay. Yeah. We love you anyways. We have instant replay now. Do we ignore the 15-minute rule? That is up to NOP if they are willing to ignore the NO, the the pause limit. Um, hopefully well, because, yeah. it doesn't come to that um, but that I know on the rule side is going to be on NOP if they want to give uh, 7OS the benefit of the pause and see here's my thing with it if if Rich's <laughs> computer actually did crap out it's going to take way longer than 15 minutes yeah, for it, it could take them some to time. find any sort of replacement or get to somewhere where they can get another computer going with League Up and logging back in and everything. So, And the pauses for these games actually only last 30 minutes, which I'm pretty sure after the fact just puts you right back in the game. It starts it back up. Yeah. So... I mean, either way, they're back. Our... Everybody are. We're going to restart here. Violet Sociocat, probably going to die to Bear Senor. Fudgy Ditters might have... I don't think we're going back in. They just said oh, R. They are back. Never mind. But they haven't unpaused yet. Game resumes in five. All right, here four, we go. Three, two, one, and we are live. Flash forward by Fudgy Ditters, and Fudgy Ditters is going to get a double kill right there. That is going to be so good for Fudgy Ditters. Get started on those items early. 
<coughs> yeah, so, yeah, man, that DC was going to feel really bad. Uh, Jirachi getting killed there, just standing still. Going to be super behind now from Fudgy Ditters, and I don't really know a way where you could reset that to be any kind of fair. Um, I mean, there really isn't um, a way that can happen. So, like, unless they wanted to remake, but yeah. then that would change up everything completely. So, it is what it is, and we're going to be moving forward. Kingston trading a little bit of damage here in the top lane with bad instincts. Old Instincts Goku was able to build a little bit of a farm lead over Gurk 7, as New Kappa Turk has found Hillary Clinton in the jungle. Does have a red buff, but is just going to go through the wall. How do you really need to learn what that ability is called? Just piecing out a little bit. Shadow step. Uh, That's what yes. it's called. Shadow step through the wall. As Hillary this Yorick, I will say. Gonna go top lane. We're gonna see a gank here. Gonna get the knockup as Kingston Hyper X, but Bad Instincts is gonna get out and flash it away. Well, Meanwhile, mid lane, there. Girk 7 misses the Scorch. Yeah, that's always a very well played from Maokai players. Uh, you see it a lot, but it's, it's a great play. Oh, Pillar Flame is going to land. He does have the brand passive on him. A little burn. But you see the gang top coming, and just before any sort of CC hit, in this case, it was the baby cage from Yorick, you use your... Uh, use your... What is it? W? Yeah, your twisted advance, and you go to the target, and then he instantly flashed away. So that way, before anything else could hit or any other damage or anything, was just out of the completely out of range at that point. So well played there from Bad Six. Okay. Going and twisted advance into High Key Sniper X. Knock him into tower range, takes a tower shot, but he looks to be out. A sapling will not chase him down yet. As Kingston's just gonna back here. Uh Dirk Seven though almost picked himself up a kill in the mid lane. As in goes Bear Senor, uh, is gonna get stunned. Gonna burn the heal, but New Kappa Turk coming through the wall. As Zap is gonna hit Fudgy Ditters. Gonna get slowed down now, and the damage is coming out. Is they gonna get the third? Mm, not quite. Oh, Jirachi does not give all the auto. He has so little health, as we see Old Instinct Goku taken down by Gurk7. The fight is still on Blotling. Kingston Hyper X is here. Jirachi, uh, Hillary Clinton's here as Violet Sosucat trying to get out, gonna pop the shield, gonna get knocked up and knocked back by Bear Senor as Hillary Clinton is gonna pick up this kill. Yeah, very nice roam there. It was well played from Fudgy Ditters, not having flash, but just still using that heal early and then just not enough damage there from 7 or less in the, the bot lane between uh, New Kappa Turk, Jinx, and the Tom Kinch. There's not enough damage to take him down. Got him down to like 10 health though. Just not enough though. Yeah, I think that's a product of Jirachi just being so far behind. Not able to have a, uh, a BF sword quite yet. Hextech <laughs> flash over the wall by Baird Senor. I like that. Why the heck not? Why not? Um, and Mountain well, it's like Drake, a 30 second cooldown. Yeah, Mountain Drake going over to not our president. 20 second cooldown. I like it. So it's back up already. But yeah, that just enabled them right there. Um, to get that, you know, because they got the kill there and they forced the Jinx and Tom Kench out of lane at that point. Free Dragon, because Doric was already in the bot lane. You had a almost a full health Alistar and you had a, a brand there as well we're gonna see more trading in the bot lane Jirachi pushing the wave into Fudgy um, so all in all a lot of Ola going on Hillary Clinton takes a red buff got missing pings in the top lane yeah and something we didn't really see uh, we saw a kill in the mid lane like I said, we didn't actually see it on the replay unless you were on it. I but, was on it for a briefly. Uh, yeah, so Gurk7 picking up the kill with that, you know, just the damage from Brand uh, and Instinct Goku having to use mana to clear waves and everything. 
Um, we're seeing Gurg7 now flip that CS differential as Kingston is going to go in on Bad Instincts. Bad Instincts is going to twist advance back. Um, the, not a whole lot of damage traded there, just a bunch of mana as both top laners look to still be pretty healthy. Bad Instincts does well, no longer has a level over Kingston, so no advantage there as both jugglers are now rotated to their top side camps. We might be able to see some spicy plays here. Or not. I don't feel like we're going to see a whole lot coming out here from the top lane. Just because both are getting a little beefy. Uh, and I, obviously there's not a whole lot of damage trades here. A bad but it instincts. looks like New Capitrix making his way up here. Yeah, Bad Instincts does have, looks almost like a 20 CS lead over Kingston. That's because Kingston spent some time bot lane. As Bad Instincts is probably going to get the twisted advance here onto Kingston who dashes in. Ram coming out now, but Hillary Clinton and Gurg7 have rotated, and the fight has turned. It is now a 2v3 as in goes the Pyroclasm. Pyroclasm bounces around, gonna get the stun and the Scorch. Kingston Ooh, the is not gonna get the kill. No, Hillary Clinton gets the kill as Kingston is taking power shots, and Kingston is gonna get dropped by New Kappa Turk, who's gonna pay for it with his life. So two for one in the top lane, and they are gonna push this tower. They still have the mating too for Hillary Clinton, so the tower push should be on. I don't know if they'll get it because it was a completely full health tower, but but nice flash there from Gurg7 to land the stun onto Bad Instincts. Was able to still get off a little bit of damage with the uh, the passive to stay along live live. Alive long enough <coughs> to help keep Kingston under tower for just a second longer. Now, as Ooh, we're going to see more in plays in the bot lane, Zap's going to hit on Bear Senior. Buddy Ditters is out of mana, and the Bad Instincts is here, and that looks like it might be just a slightly wasted teleport, unless they're going to find four man this bot lane. As Fudgy Ditters, though, is going to have to back. Seer misses from Gurg7. Yeah, I mean, the flash from Bear Senior was just long enough that uh, Bad Instincts was not in, able to get in range of the Twisted Advance. Otherwise, that could have been a, f a kill there onto Bear Senor. We're seeing the Azir now rotate bot lane. Ult Instinct Goku coming down. Is he going to make a play or is he just... What's he doing? Hmm. I don't know, it looks like we have New Kappa Turk and Violet Sosa Cat in a bush. They're gonna go oh. after Fudgy Ditters, who takes a rocket from Jirachi, but Hextech Flash going over the wall by Bear Singh. You are flashed away by Jirachi. Still gonna get hit by the Chains of Corruption as Ult Instinct Goku gonna knock Bear Senor back over the wall, but Bear Senor might be out. He's in underneath the tower. Unbreakable Will out, and he's still not dead yet. And Jirachi picks up the kill. Hillary Clinton has come bought into this 4v1. This might be a mistake. As Violet Sociocat flashes over the wall, Hillary Clinton flashes over the wall, and we still have action in the bot lane as there's still four members here. See, they should have known that New Camp of Turk was there. There was a ward in the second bush in, in lane um, for the side of NOP. In, in that second bush on the side of 7LS, there was a, a ward there, so they should have been able to see New Kappa Turk going into that bush. I don't know if maybe it just went unnoticed at the time when he went into the, the you know, the closer bush to their tower. But yeah, there they did have a ward that, that was there. Yeah, so I'd have to double check to make sure, but. Dragon coming up in three, 30 seconds or so. But yeah, first tower going over to 7LS. Again, bot lane, the focus for their team. Trying to get Jirachi back, who does this out even in CS and has a kill and an assist. So he's got a BF sword, a zeal, and completed boots. So very much back into this game as it looks like a banner of command of the top lane for minion already. That's going to suck for bad instincts to clear as that tower should go down. Here comes the ram twist. Uh, Nietzsche's crafts coming out. Going to get the ram knockback. But Kingston looks to be trapped, and Kingston is going to get taken down here. Two bad instincts as Jirachi and friends are there as well. In the mid lane, though, they're going to get the mid lane tower in response. 
I'm probably just going to look for this dragon in the bot lane. While Seven LS is going to get the top tower and possibly look for Rift Herald. Yeah, Jirachi in the minigun form, going to take down this turret pretty quickly. Pings onto. Ooh, the rocket's the coming rocket. out. Is it going to hit? Is it going to hit? It will hit, but it it's does. not enough. Almost hit Berg 7 there on the way down. <coughs> yeah, as we're going to see immediately, New Kappa Turk and friends are on to the Rift Hill. That is the call. Drachi firing over the pit. Brand is here. Are they going to fight for it? Oh, the Ooh. response there from NOP. Sierra going to land. Pirate Pillar Flame Bad lands. Bad is out of position right now. Bad is a bit pushed forward. It's very senior. And friends, they're gonna, just going to go dive into the team, all five members. Drachi's trying to do some damage. That Violet Sosy Cat eats him. And is he out? Oh. No, they're going to get trapped in the baby cage. And Fudgy Gators is going to get the kill. As Bear Senor dives in onto Old Sensei Goku, Old Sensei Goku barely alive. Ignite ticking. He's gonna get. He's gonna die to Gurg Seven as New Kappa Turk walks through the wall, and the mid turret has destroyed itself. That was the Shirima turret. Yeah, but they didn't get Rift Hill. Rift Hill reset, so now it's a free Rift Hill for Seven LS if they go and take it right now. I think you mean not our president. Yes, the one. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> now Fudgy, Hillary Clinton, Bear Senor, and. The Maiden, along with Kingston, are going to go take it. Pearson Nora's probably going to back here. But here comes New Kappa Turk coming from the side. He's not going to be able to get the bear or the thingy Rift Herald as Hillary Clinton <laughs> that one. it. Yeah. But yeah, there was a couple things going on with that fight. Just bad instincts was just a few steps too far, far forward. A little bit of miscommunication there. He was kind of staying, pressuring them off, while the rest of the team was two steps back behind. And so he got caught out a little bit on his own, didn't have the ult available at the time to use, uh, ends up paying for it, and then something that might have been able to steer some more kills, Fudgy Dinner shot his ult at the Rift Herald and did not hit anybody uh, from 7LS. I could have secured some more kills if that would have been able to spread and land that CC on him. Yeah. Well, just a 1k gold lead then for NLP, as it looks like they are going to rotate bot side now. Fudgy Gator is taking this red buff, as they are currently, well, we're tied with turrets, mid turret left for NLP, and the bot turret left for 7LS, still standing. Yeah, I mean, they're, they got the same amount of towers. They do have a couple dragons to their name. 7LS did too. get the first tower, so they got that extra gold. <laughs> As we see Bad Instincts fighting a banner minion in the top lane and not having a good time. <laughs> That's just so that rude. damage does nothing. So rude. He's got the bomby cinder, but that's magic damage, so it does nothing yeah. to banner minions. That is going to be a problem for Bad Instincts. I still haven't taken down that minion. <laughs> Just got it. <laughs> but as we see from NOP, they have two Mountain Drakes now. Two Mountain Drakes. That is insane for what their comp can do. Chain of Corruption misses from Fudgy Ditters. Trying to catch the do, If they do anything like we talked about earlier, and you know maybe even do a 1-3-1 one, one split, I don't think they'll do that, but I think that's something that they could do if they keep rolling with their lead. I think the one three it, one's on, especially with, with a banner in the Orn and the Maiden for Hillary Clinton. Like the one three and one, I feel two like mountain drakes yeah, I feel like that's it's on. Like you could do it. Um, the you just next be one careful. is also a mountain drake. If they get that, those towers are gonna melt. Absolutely melt. Yeah. So priority. Already quick. It's gonna be there. We're gonna see the tower. Legacy Tower, I don't even know what you call this thing. The Molten Sink Goku, that is the Shurima's Legacy. Yeah, Legacy Tower. I got that right. Legacy Tower, back up. The Legacy of Shurima is real. Sure. Classic. Classic. But, I, I'm kind of curious as to why they haven't rotated bot for that last outer tower yet. Uh, I think that would be the call, just because... It is that outer tower. You're not pushing needlessly in onto their side. Um, yeah. It would be something. Uh, I don't want to say a free pickup, but 
I think it would be an easy pickup for them. And just as we were saying, the 1 3 1 is here. Orn and York has split to the side lanes. And it looks like 7 LS is trying to decide who's going to go where to deal with it. We got a yeah, pretty sizable wave. The bot, lane. bot side now. But here comes Brand, Fudgy, and Bear Senor all coming out. The Maiden has been spawned in the top lane as that bannered. That bannered minion is just smashing the tower. Violet Sosa Cat is here, going to try and save the Jinx as Bear Senor is going to miss the engage. And that tower is taken down in the bot lane. Rift Herald has been spawned mid lane? In the base. In the base. Which lane is it going to go? No, it's going bot lane, actually. Bot lane. Wow. The push is on in the bot lane as four members are still there. They have pushed the wave all the way, all the way into tower. And they are going to set for... Dragon. Oh dear. Skyer's orb. None of not... them got spotted. That's the weird thing. Yeah. So, I guess they kind of know where they're at, but they didn't see them running this direction. New Kappa Turk going to spot one now with a ward as Bear Senor and friends. Fudgy Gitters flashes forward, and that is a flash in response from Jirachi. Again, going for Jirachi. And now they might chase bad instincts, or no. Rift Herald pushing bot lane, Ulton Goku has to go deal with it. <coughs> and we're just seeing a little in a decision here by not our president. Yeah, they need to just go pick up this dragon. They've got the priority on it at this point. They've got the pressure bot lane with the Rift Herald that has to be dealt with. Free pickup. Yep. Like, no contest, and they can't. All right. Three, 7 LS can't do anything about that. Three Mountain Drakes. Let's see what you can do now. Yeah, and now there's no flash from Jirachi. That's huge. Jirachi only has a Runeans at this point and one to BF sword. So still honestly pretty weak. So not not necessarily a huge priority, um, but there is no flash available for Jirachi at this point. So easy next fight kill and wait for, you know, the cooldown from uh, the Chain of Corruption for Fudgy Dinners, which actually in this last one would have missed regardless, but still burn the flash from Jirachi. But wow. use that as a tool next time. Yeah, we're gonna see a fight here in mid lane as out. Zap gonna hit Bear Senor and that's gonna dis dissuade them from chasing. But there's a lot of wards that are gonna spot this rotation. All right, well, looking at some farm here real quick. We're pretty much even in top lane as both laners are about 6 CS between them. Um, but in the jungle, look at that differential with Hillary Clinton and New Cap and Turk. 40, 143 to 104, about 40 CS up there, plus a kill. Quite the lead for Hillary Clinton. Yeah, I mean, that's something you've been seeing all game is just Hillary Clinton's been in the jungle farming it up like crazy. And I actually think this has been and side lanes. You look here again, the 1-3-1 yeah. is back on. Bear Senor a little far forward against Bad Instincts right there. But now they've caught New Kappa Turk. It looks like he might be stuck in a bind. He's going to flash away. But he, Kingston is going to be able to cut him off. Is Kingston going to slow him down? Going to hit the knockup and New Kappa Turk going to die to Gerg 7. As Hillary Clinton is still pushing bot lane. Double buffs yeah, and a maiden. Like, you would think this is something where NOP can just go for Baron, but they've got this priority in both top lane and bot lane right now. But Hillary Clinton's going to take this, while Jirachi's yes is going to get an outer mid lane turret. NOP is going to be looking for more. Yeah, they're going to get this. It looks like they're going to get this top tier one as Emperor's Divide is going to come out. But Chains of Corruption hits Ultimate and Goku, and Gurk7 is going to pick up another kill. Meanwhile, bot yeah. lane, Hillary Clinton is taking on Bad Instincts, and there goes this tier 2 in the top lane. It's just action left and right. Yeah, that was just a way over aggression there from Old Instinct Goku. There was nobody there on the team to follow up. I think at that point, there was only a, a, a Tom Kench there to, to help out at all. Uh, and so, with just the damage from Brand, just an instant pop of, of, of the Azir there, so they're turning on to Baron now. Rocket is gonna Ooh, miss. Rocket miss, but 
And the Baron is pretty low. Here comes New Kappa Turk, and Brand is actually going to get the kill. New Kappa Turk going to get taken down as the Ram going to get knocked over. That's going to hit Jirachi, but there's no one close by to help out. And they're NOP going to reset. So NOP, currently 5k gold up, does have the Baron power play at the moment for another three minutes, it looks like. Yeah, so NOP taking over this game here. They're going to have a banner minion as well, which they can use with Baron to do a lot of damage. It Obviously, minion? it's it's been nerfed a little bit from what it used to be. That but still, those banner minions with Baron buff. Those things are stupid. Do a ton of damage. It, it does insane amounts of damage. All right, the push is on mid lane. There is no one here to defend, so Butchy Ditters is going to be able to take this tower pretty uninterrupted as Pillar yeah. Clinton again splits to the bot side of the map. 7LS, this game has looked a little bit out of sorts. They have looked a little bit split in their overall, you know, macro game and their positioning. You know, you'd have a couple of, you've had a couple of people, you know, in the jungle when a major, you know, like a tower is going down or a major objective is going down. You've had a, a member in the jungle at that point, which is a little surprising because they've been really, they've done really well at knowing where to be, when to be there. All right, this here is the one going to answer this son, but the seer is going to land onto Violet Sociocat who just gets knocked up and down like a volleyball. As in goes Kingston Hyper X though, but he's under the tower, taking a whole lot of damage. And New Kappa Turk is gonna get brought into the team by Kingston. And Fudgy Ditters is on the chase. He's gonna get knocked up, but there's a kill on Kingston. As Ult Instinct Goku is gonna get taken down by Hillary Clinton. New Kappa Turk taken down by Fudgy Ditters. Wow, nice. As thou, we are currently frozen. Awesome. Yeah. Fudgy Ditters has the Ginsu's Blade of the Ruin King now. Doing a ton of damage. Instinct Goku gonna get taken down by Hillary Clinton. He gets those stacks going and just down absolutely wow. shreds. Nice. Um, we... But we, that whole sequence of events started off with Violet Sociocat getting a little bit caught. What looked like a really good play because uh, she sucked up the banner minion and then tried to bring it back into tower, but then it ended up just getting engaged on. Uh, you and then you got brand ulted. Jirachi got hit with the brand ult as well, so got taken really low. And then that caused Kingston to just full on engage onto Jirachi. But 7LS wasn't able to take down the Orn, and it brought uh, the Kane back into the fight since Kane ulted the Orn, brought it back into their team, and they were able to get the kill afterwards. And this is and then they also took two good. towers and, and two in hits. We see the Infernal Drake going over for Not Our President, and this game is starting to slowly spiral out of control. Um, and yes, this is still game number one. Um, NOP with a really big lead now. 9k gold up as we're going to go a little fast to catch up. Yeah, 9k gold lead has three Mountain Drags and now just got an Infernal Drag as well to add on top of that. Plus both inhibs, like this is, this is, uh, it's not looking good for 7LS. Okay, so if you're 7LS, what do you gotta do to turn this game around? The Azir will scale, the Jinx will scale, but I, you really gotta, you gotta slow this game down. Like, they have to find a fight on their terms. At this point, they have been, like I said, they have been very sort of discombobulated in their like grouping and their, their their team fights just because they haven't always had everybody there at all times and then you get one person caught out in that last fight it was Violet Sociocat in previous fights you know Ult Instinct Goku has stepped a little far so is New Captain Turk or Bad Instincts at the Baron you know piss uh, so it's It's something where they just have to fight on their terms. 
All right, well, the push and is on. Hope that they can get an over engage. In yeah. top lane, as the Maiden has been summoned, Jirachi has to clear the minions off of the Nexus Towers because there's two waves of supers there. Stun going to land onto Vyasos Cat. Seer and is going to turn into a brand passive as the tower gets taken down. And first divided is going to prevent people from jumping onto Azir, but we have all kinds of action here. Bad instincts going to get deleted by Fudgy Gitters. Right, Associate Cat eats new Cap of Turk. There goes the last inhibitor. And NLP right. is on to the Nexus Towers. Tower this number is where one. Jirachi needs to go. Like, he's got to get the damage out. They've got to be able to get some sort of damage in this fight. Hopefully, with the Runans and the. Yeah. And goes Kingston. Kingston's going to get back up, though, as there's a bannered minion. And there goes New Kappa Turk inside of Fudgy Gitters, but he's going to get brought back to the team and then just taken down by Hillary Clinton as both Nexus Towers have been taken down. Violet Sociocat is going to get killed by Fudgy Gitters. And game number one, it looks like it's going to go over to Not Our President as that. That game was unfortunately not very close since that early game shenanigans in the jungle bot side. I was splitting top. The rest of my team didn't get the memo. You were splitting bot, not top. Banner no, he MVP. was saying he was splitting top. The rest of the team just came to join him for some reason. Oh. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that, that came down to, you know, they started getting early game. There was a couple, I mean, I can't, we can't necessarily just blame it on the oh, DC right. from Jirachi there uh, because if I'm being honest the the Varus wasn't necessarily like because Varus picked up the double kill there on the bot lane but the Varus wasn't necessarily the the clincher of this game yes was six and one had a great score but I think the clincher was just the fact that they had the split push and then they NOP picked the better fights they had those better fights going on there was a couple of fights like the early one around you know rift herald there was one around dragon where 7ls tried to have you know it looked like they had a really good fight but it just got turned around and went badly for them and then nop just happened to be there and it's like okay well now they picked up a couple kills and they picked up a dragon. Yeah. Okay, there's another fight. Now they picked up a couple kills, and they picked up a rift herald because they were there, and it was a you know it was a, a advantageous fight for them. So because of how everything kind of turned out and where they were when they won the fights, they were able to pick up those objectives after the right after the fight, and then keep snowballing, and yeah. they were able to win those yeah. those fights yeah. and keep getting more objectives from it. Yeah, not, that's not to mention that fight over by the Baron where Bad Instincts ended up getting caught by three members of NOP. Mm -hmm. um, that fight looked like it would have started all right, and then because 7LS had more members at the start of the fight, but then the rest of NOP showed up, and it it was, you know, it, it was just unfortunate that Bad Instincts wasn't there to zone for the team, and that Fudgy Ditters had already completed his Gwinsu, so he was shredding through. Uh, that front line really quickly. It, it seemed like 7LS needed that game to go a bit later um, for them to really have success there. You needed Bad Instincts to become that super tank and Violet Sociocat to get a little bit more tankiness in her stats um, so that they could shield Jirachi uh, a bit better because Jirachi was starting to catch up. 248 farm um, and then one kill, two deaths, three assists, Um Ended up with a 2.0 KDA. Uh, was making the comeback, though, on farm. Um, but we're going to take a look at some damage numbers here. Yeah, and we're going to see that brand from Gerg7 yep. lead the way. 19,000 damage to champions. Um, by far and away Dude. the most damage in the game. Uh, we have Fudgy Ditters, 12,000 damage. Uh, pretty good number from an ADC. Um, Orn, almost 10k damage on his own. That's pretty good. Um, and then if we look down over at 7LS, we have Jinx leading the way, as we would expect. Um, 9,000 damage there, 8,000 by uh, Azir, um, and then 7,000 by New Cap Turk, 6,000 for Bad Instincts, and only 4,000 for Violet Sosa Cap, but that's to be expected. Riches, CPU, least valuable player. Yeah, uh, 
that that was a very unfortunate DC right at the beginning of the game. Um, so, anyways, we're going to take a short break, um, about three minutes or so, so we can get the stream reset. Um, so stick around. Game number two coming your way. Not our president taking the one game lead over seven live least sins. All right. 